So today is, what's the date today? It's the 18th of June. Is it the 18th of June? Wow. 2019. Okay, so today what I want to do is I want to explain to you and to, we call it, the targets is the most important driver of a business. So I want to get down to a point where we can start now using dashboards or we can using our own boards to drive our own targets. Because remember guys, all this training that we've been doing for a one year now is all about us educating you on the model of moving from an employee to a subcontractor. So a subcontractor, all of these lessons that we've been doing now is all driving you, teaching you, for you to understand that when you have to now measure your target and measure your performance and measure those things, you're going to have to look at a target. Because I can tell you something now, you've got monthly expenses to pay. You've got staff to pay. You've got equipment to pay. All of those things that you're going to have to pay are going to have to get paid. And if you don't have generation or you don't have money coming in, what's going to happen? You can't pay it. You can't pay it. Okay. So how's that going to feel? So for the first time in your lives, you're going to have to have pressure on delivering. Now, usually in this business, Duncan is the one who takes that pressure. It's because he's the one who's got to deliver at the end of the month, really. Whereas you guys are sitting back and just getting a salary. So you must understand, it's a different model now. Eh? It's a completely different model. When now you've got to generate your income. And remember, it's, it's going to be a challenge at first. You're going, to, you're going to have to think about what you're doing. But obviously, we'll, we'll move forward with that and we'll guide you along the way. Okay, so today we're looking at, we call it tickets. Does everybody know what tickets are? Okay, so let's just deal with tickets first. And the way that I would like to see us working towards tickets is that tickets are information that comes, it's, it's potential jobs, if we're going to call it that. Eh? Potential jobs, projects, from leads generation. Do you all know what leads generation is? We've been discussing it for the last two weeks. Leads generation is a column in your Trello board that you working on that lead. Okay. There's a company leads generation board there, which everybody's seen. And it's got a list of a whole lot of people on it. If you click on each and every one of those people, then obviously there's going to be activity in what, what you are doing. So if you copy, copy from that board across to your board, then you know that you're picking those. Those are the leads that you're working on. Okay. So what tickets are, tickets is a monthly list. From your leads, you get tickets. So if, let's say, for instance, we had to make a ticket board. And we make it January, February, March... April, and so on. Okay. Then what I would do is I would say, okay, so we've got a ticket board for UPP, or let's say, for instance, we call it UPP ticket board. All right. And in March, Karen's going to say, or we get an email coming in and says, Sean, I need you to look at 25... Marlborough Street, new job for Tetris. So you would put there number one, and it's a Tetris lead ticket for some, some job. Okay, and then normally what we would do is if it came through Sean, then we'd say Mr. Sean Menji's SM. There you go. Okay. Now this is a company ticket board. So at the bottom there, we've got, we've got clipboards. What Corinne is going to do, she's going to put the clipboards up on the wall. All right, and this is for the company. So what I want to see at the end of the month is what? How many people have been working on their leads? I want to see a total, don't I? Yeah. Okay, so let's say for instance the total for the month was 120 tickets. Alright. What is that going to tell me? For the month of January, the average of 120 tickets was driven through leads generation. <coughs> so that's every single person in the business. Now... You can have SM going 95 times, 
and you can have Lungelo one and then the rest can be noughts. Then it's going to identify who's the most productive person in the company. Okay. Because ultimately, guys, what this is about, this business is about, is about lead generation and it's about opening tickets. Nothing else happens if we don't work the leads. So eventually what I want to start seeing is that this will start going to three, four, all the way up and there'll be a lot of tickets. Okay. I'm not asking for targets yet. I'm just saying I target tickets. That's what I want to start seeing. I want to see that a mindset is on tickets first. Because remember, a ticket gets open and potentially we can work. All right, so 120 tickets for the month of Feb, then we get to, uh, sorry, January, then we get to Feb, and the same thing happens again, is I want to see in Feb how many tickets we can do, because now what's going to happen, this is going to be 125, and what are we going to know now? There's more people working on this. So there's more people and more action, so now we're starting to get a snowball effect as in something started to happen. What happens if it gets down to now there? What happens? Then not everybody's been pushing. Okay, because there's a reason now you've dropped a hundred. Maybe there were some holidays in the March or whatever it is, but it's gonna talk a story. Okay. But ultimately, least generation, this thing over here, is gonna pump into there. And it's going to give you an indication of how many tickets that are we actually working on. Okay. Is that making sense? Mm. All right. Is that going to help you guys with generating leads? And is everybody getting an understanding of what leads are? Of, okay, but what, out of, on the ticket list, out of the 120 for the month, let's say 75 are being invoiced, which means 75 jobs has been accepted. Yes. So X amount is left so over, gonna, which means that that is quoting, that is follow up. That's a different board. Yeah, that's exactly. a different list. Different because list. remember, what we're going to do now is that you're going to take the ones that are actually turning into, because it's either going to turn into a quote yes. or an assessment. Yes. Okay, because a ticket is just, an, it's just, a, it's just something. A lead generation is something that you're working on and you're working on a, a relationship with someone. And then eventually a ticket is going to come out of that person. What we want to do is we want to capture the tickets. Because ultimately we want to know how many tickets we're doing. Because tickets is the potential amount of work that could have been done if we got full tickets done. Remember, quotes. We might have a ticket that opens up and then a quote's never driven from it. It never even got to a quote. Am I right? Can that happen? Yeah, you could forget. Like someone could phone you and say, Sean, just make me sure, do a quote or do, make sure you just get to this. And then nothing, <coughs> yeah. someone forgets. Yeah. So how important is that ticket list? It's very important because it, it's actually describing every single potential lead that is in the business. Okay, so once we have the tickets right, I understand we're going to move towards the quote side. For me, it's like an assessment quote. Because an assessment could be done. And the reason why I ask for assessments next is because sometimes assessments should not need to be done. It could have been that you could have quoted over the phone. So we don't know that at the moment because I don't know, oh, Corinne's just sending, sending, sending. Why does Lungela go out to do an assessment for a leaking toilet when we don't even have to do that? So I want to see out of the tickets, all right, how many assessments were driven and then obviously how many quotes were out of there. And then from there, it goes to, obviously, jobs. Remember, we used to have that list there. It goes to jobs. And then it goes to invoicing. Mm. And then the whole process starts again. Mm. But the generation, the lead generation, that is relationship building. Tickets, mm. like invoicing is about, I mean, um, tickets is, is about us potentially making that happen. All right, then your sales is basically between your assessment and your quote. And then invoicing is a job done. All right, because <coughs> then you've potentially done the job. But the question is you've got to get acceptances, don't you? So you're either going to get accepted or rejected. So tickets are going to go into assessment quotes scenario, aren't they? And then they're going to go into accepted or rejected, am I right? 
And you're going to get a column here that's going to say, out of the 120 tickets that we had, okay, we had 65 accepted, and we had 50, whatever, rejected. Rejected. Okay, now what is that going to say? And then we're going to ask, all right, out of the 620, we had SM here, 90 of them, and 90 of them were rejected. What's that going to say? Well, I can only think if it's been rejected, something's wrong with our pricing. Yeah, it could be pricing. That's yeah. our main thing that we get. Do you automatically go to pricing or do you automatically go, maybe there's something wrong with me? I go to pricing. And huh? I'll tell you why, because I've had lots of quotes rejected because of our pricing. Then there's something wrong with me. Me. Yeah, me. Yeah. I never lose a job on price. Never, ever, ever do I lose a job on price. It's based on relationship, based on value. People, when they buy your services, they buy you on value. They don't buy you on price. Mm -hmm. if, if you are struggling to get jobs because of price, mm -hmm. it means you haven't built a great relationship. It should never be about price. There should be a relationship first before price. If you haven't done your homework in investigation, analyzing, and, and getting to the point where you know that you've already sussed out the budget and you've done... Because remember, you walk into a job knowing the price already. Yeah. Before you get that final price, you already know what you're going to do. So you cannot be losing jobs on price, guys. It's, it's insanely wrong. You need to understand it's probably because I don't know my sales process. I don't know my sales system. And I can tell you that's the problem right away. By looking now, it's because you're just sending out a price. You're not knowing how to work it out. Remember, there are certain ways that you work it out. Never just believe what the guy on site is saying. You need to take into consideration that there are so many other things. There are offer six things happening. There's, there's so many things that point A to B. They'll say, oh, it's two hours. I'll go, but hold on. I know how long it's going to take to get the stock. I know how long this process is going to take. So it's not just two hours. It could be four hours. But remember, the client buys on experience, don't they? Yeah. So if your experience with a client is great, then you're going to get more and more sales. Mm. But if they experience you as, oh, you know, this Oak's so disorientated, he's, he's just so disorganized, he, he just doesn't know what he's doing, uh, he takes five hours to get a job done, he comes, he arrives here, assesses the job, and then he goes back to the office, and then I get a call from the office, and the office says, um, yeah, we're just waiting on this thing here. And then three days later, they get the quote. And then the client goes, oh my goodness. Um, wow, this is an efficient company. Eh? They take three days to get a quote for a toilet. And then the, then the guys arrive and then they come to the job and they say, oh, we're going to need a pan connector. But you quoted on fixing the toilet, but you don't have a pan connector. So now you have to go and get a pan connector and you come back. And by the time you finish the job, it's taken us 17 hours. But we quoted two hours. You see where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So that is where targets and all of that is, that is where time comes into play. Is that we've got to also start quoting now in view of all the things that are going to happen in the business. All the things that are potentially going to cause us pain. So we need to take in consideration the, the time it takes to... That's why we have to have our stock on the buckies <coughs> properly done. That's why we have to be geared to our first fixed item so we know that we can go there and do the job. I mean, if you had to truly say, if we bring one of the plumbers in from another company and we put him over here and we showed him our system and now we want to show him that our <coughs> training facility here and under pressure is so good and we want to bring him over here and we do... Will he look at us and say, fuck it, that company is on the ball. Eh? Would he say that or not? Right now. Right now. Yeah. Uh. No. Wow. But you just said 100% or nothing. That's what we've been training for the last year. <clears throat> so it's taken you a year to say no. Do you see where I'm going with this? Are we up to scratch or not? No, we're not, guys. We've got a long way to go. And the question lies in is, if we're going to be the number one market leader and we're going to show everybody else, then 
I think we've got a long way to go, guys. I really do. I think we've got, you know, potentially a lot of things to change. I think the first thing I say is let's look at ourselves. What are we going to do better and what can we do to enhance our own knowledge? Remember, self-motivation is one of our, our values, our key values. And it means that we're going to have to self-motivate. Think about it, guys. If you're working for yourself as a subcontractor to, to the UPP group, what are you going to have to do? There's going to be a list of jobs that come in every day. I open tickets. And you're going to be, either you're going to be phoning in to say, you know, Corin, I don't have any work for this week. And Corin's going to say, well, you know what? Your performance isn't that great at the moment. And you're not actually trying. So we've given all the other work to other guys. What are you going to say? Eh? Suppose you'll try. You'll say, give me the work so I can show you. Because now you have to make your own money. And then what's going to happen? You're going to run. You're going to chase. Oh, you're going to chase, but... Because your life's on the line now. Have you ever been chased by a Tootsie? A burglar. You've never been chased by a burglar. And you've got to climb that wall and it's seven foot tall. I'm using an example, guys. When you're running for fear, someone's trying to kill you. And there's a seven foot wall. You know what? You'll climb that wall. Okay. So when you come to the end of the month and you've got no money in your bank and you've got to feed your family... You will climb that wall. And that's what we talk about is that we need to get down to that, le that level of understanding is that when we need to produce, we must produce. It's like owning your own material, your own stock, isn't it? Your own tools. When it's yours, you look after it. When it's not yours, you fuck it up. <laughs> and that's the truth, isn't it? Hey, John. Not always. What do you mean not always? <coughs> you can't break the tools by purpose. You can't break the tools by purpose. I don't know. I think sometimes you can. Depends on your attitude. Eh? If you want to break it, you'll break it. <coughs> if your attitude is I don't care, then, then you'll break it. You know what I'm saying? But it's the point of when you break something, what do you do? <coughs> Exactly that. You just keep quiet. Yeah. When you break something, you just keep quiet. That's what everybody does. When you break your record, do you do you keep quiet? I don't know. That's up to you. That's your that's your attitude. That's your decision. Yeah, but if I break my laptop, I can tell someone, okay, my thing is broken. So. What must I do? Can I can I find a ways to fix these things or, or what? Because I know it's the thing that I'm using every day. Yeah, but it's like sometimes someone can have something and they can use it for ten years and never break it, and someone can have something for five minutes and break it. It's like I've at home. I've got children. I've been. I've had something in my in my house for like thirty years, and they come along and within five minutes it's broken. It's because they don't understand the value of what is in that thing. And sometimes we need to realize that, is that you guys don't understand the value of what's living inside of you. And if you take ownership of that value which is living inside of you, you'll appreciate it a lot more. You don't know what's been given to you. So now what you need to understand is to start utilizing that more and more and more. Okay. So let's go back to... We've got a ticket list. Corin's working on a ticket list now. So in the mornings when you walk in here, there's going to be a ticket list for every month. I know there's a target board there. That's, that's a target which is driven completely out of, out of lead generation. The other thing that you can also do, Corin, is get the lead generation up on the board. Okay? Let, make a list of... All the potential leads that we have in this business, like you've got on the trailer board. Remember, the trailer boards, we're using them as a reporting system. But there's a manual process that the guys need to come in in the huddle in the morning. And they need to huddle around their boards and say, 
So you know what I'm saying? That they're not all going to go to Trello, are they? No. But what we can do is that we can update their boards in terms of their tickets for the month. Eh? That's easy enough. That that they can get. Eh? Am I right? Okay. So let's. Trello works from. It works from left to right, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So what you need to understand is number one must be something, number two must be something, number three, so that you can move the boards across. Or you can just copy, 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 copy. Mm. Okay, whatever works for you. But I think that you want to see the tickets, you want to see the list. Okay, that's the company. And then obviously then from here, you transfer it to the, to the board. Yeah. So it also requires a bit of activation from everybody. Mm. And that's why I'm saying, if we put the boards up on the top, the tickets, that's important. Because then we can see what's coming from here. Okay, so we're going to have this board over here, which is your lead generation. Mm. That's going to be a list of all the people that we can plug into. Mm. And on Trello, th that list is already there. Mm. I've already done it for you guys. Mm. Okay, and that is something to remind you of. And then within the cards, you can have, that's why I said lead generation tickets. For me, I think that's, that's typically you have all the leads that you work on. Those are cards that you're working on, working on. Mm -hmm. And then what happens from there is that within that card, you can generate another card, can't you? And that can be your ticket. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then from there, yeah, because you can generate cards from cards. Mm -hmm. That's how easy it is. Yeah. I think everybody's lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but I've got you. Have you got it? Because you're the one, the one person that's going to have to drive. But I was first going to do the manual one on the board for the guys. Manual. Yeah, on the board. The board one. It's visual. Yeah, but I mean, I was looking at the boards this morning, the targets there. Do you know that for five months now, almost six months, we are below target by quite a substantial amount. Mm. And I want to ask you guys, but everybody's getting a salary every month. How does that work? Once again, we get silent. So when something's broken in this company, we just go to silence. That's how easy it is. It's because silence, you don't have to say anything, you don't have to do anything, you're not accountable to nothing, so you just keep quiet. Should I be the one saying that those, those targets down there are dropping? Eh? No. And I can see now, because in June, you're, you're going to even, in May, we did a, a, a turnover of 277,000. Eh? You know that doesn't even co cover our overheads. Mm. Does everybody know that? Okay, and this month's looking even worse than that. So, there's something seriously not happening here, guys. And I can tell you now, you, you need to start looking at that. Because the company can't survive if there's no money coming in. So, I think our lead generation needs to start getting a little bit more interactive. I think we need to start... I made a suggestion the other day, is show me your calendar for the month. Mm -hmm. Show me your calendar for the next six months. Okay. Create a calendar, guys. A calendar of lead generation. Sean, do you understand what that means? Mm. You want to see who am I seeing? I want to see who you're going to go and see, who you're going to meet. Who, what are you trying to achieve? Because if you don't do that, then there's no, there is no generation. Generation means you generate power. Mm. Understand? And we call leads generation meaning that you, you are getting leads and you're making tickets. You're opening up tickets. And the only way I can see in this business, if anybody is working... Is going to be their board up on the, and that's what I want to see. I want to see that you're physically actually doing something. Mm. And if you're making a, 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 a inroads into a, a specific person, then I'm going to see what you're doing because I'm going to see the work that's coming from that. And that's what's going to be up on the board. We're just going to go from one to the next to the next and see. And I'm going to say, well, you know what? We can't just sit back and all just expect that the work's just going to flow in. No, that's not how it works. We all have to work. Hard at generating our leads. And work hard at bringing from leads to tickets. Are we sitting here or are we understanding? Do we know what I'm talking about? <coughs> huh? James, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Do you? What lead are you going to work on? Silence. What lead are you going to work on?
Silence. John, what lead are you going to work on? We have to bring, we have to build a relationship with people and start bringing, saying ourselves and. <coughs> yeah, but lead generation is about you working on something. So if I say to you, in the next six months you've got a calendar. And let's say, for instance, that, that person that you're working on that lead is in that calendar. It means that you have to approach that person and talk to them or phone them and say, you know what, hey, how's it going? You know, just remember I'm around if you need me. I mean, that's really all it is, isn't it? Mm. Saying, hey, Boswell, or hey, Reason, or hey, whatever. I'm here, hey, if you need me, don't worry. Hey? And a personally from the plumber is, is, is so powerful, isn't it? But you've got to actively get that lead into your black book and say, those are my leads that I'm working on. Those are the ones that I want to generate. Those are the people I want to phone because those are the people that give me lots of work. And they rely and trust on me, don't they? Is that true? And when they're on site and you've got three jobs to go and do, and you know you've got a relationship with, let's say, whoever it is, Boswell or whoever. Then John says, don't worry, I'm leaving my, my two IC. Huh? My two IC on this job. <coughs> now, Gift has an opportunity or James has an opportunity to do what? Speak to that person. Speak to that person, grow that relationship, show him that, you know what, hold on. Hey, I've got it right. Because if I phone John, I know that he can spread himself to three different jobs because of the way he's done that. Can we actively do that now? We need to work on that. So that's what I want to see happening. I want to see that you're spreading your guys. Or Sean is out there saying, don't worry, our guys are full at the moment, but I'll get my backup B team. Or not even B team. He'll just say, I'll get my backup team, not yeah. the A team. And I said, they don't need to know who's coming. Yeah. All right. But the question is that relationship must be kept with you. If you use a subby, don't get that relationship to you always the, the mediator yeah. between the two. Huh? It must be the middle person. You, the middle person. And remember, don't let them work on their own without you managing. Yeah. Okay. It's very, very important. So come hell or high water. If you allow a subby to work on his own and you don't go manage him, whatever happens can be your problem. Okay. So just remember that lead generation tickets are all based on relationship that you build within your, within your sphere of people that you're dealing with. So firstly, we need to get the people up on the board that we are working with. Corin's got that list already. All right. And then from there, we need to start generating tickets. And then from there, we'll start to manage, the, we'll manage all the sales that come from it. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Yes. All right. That's today's...